Can you hear me well? Yes, I hear the mic, so I guess you can hear me well. Uh, thank you for coming for the first talk of the session. I'm going to talk about a small experiment I did last summer uh, about improving the performance of the page table of uh, OCaml. Um, I'll tell you why. Uh, I've been interested recently in uh, programming languages that implement linear allocation with reuse. That is using, is there a problem? Okay, is that better? Um, uh, languages that use, uh, say, uh, linear values to uh, implement memory uh, allocation and reclamation differently. So it's an old idea that uh, appeared immediately after uh, Girard's papers on linear logic. Uh, so it was inspired by uh, linear logic. And uh, nowadays, you can see this kind of uh, feature uh, in, uh, in a bit in a disguised way in the Rust um, type system. Uh, so this idea was that if you know that you are the only one to own a memory value, then you could do um, mutation in place and nobody will see it. Uh, and so instead of reallocating a cell, you can just reuse the cell that, uh, that you have just consumed. Uh, so it's a nice idea uh, from the uh, late 80s, early 90s, but uh, it never really, uh, was never really applied uh, successfully. And uh, we now understand uh, why is that the linearity discipline is very constrained and to have a successful language uh, that implement that sort of uh, discipline, the discipline has to be relaxed with a form of copying. So uh, this is uh, what you can see in Rust. You have ownership, but you also have borrowing and you spend most of your time borrowing values instead of owning them. Um, luckily, uh, so it's becoming easier for me to talk about that. Uh, thanks notably to uh, a work uh, by um, uh, Ryan King and his collaborators. I saw Dan Lejean yesterday. Um, so they, uh, they call it functional but in place and they solve the problem of mixing it with a form of, of copying. Simply they use reference counting and uh, when they can dynamically detect that they are the sole owner of a value, then they can reuse a cell instead of reallocating somewhere else. And they have nice benchmarks to show that uh, this speeds up uh, things. So it's used in languages like Coca and Lin. Uh, okay, but um, reference counting, uh, because uh, of their setting, they can accommodate the limitations. But I want to do that with a GC. Uh, yesterday at the ML workshop, I explained how we can um, mix GC and linear allocation by embedding GC values into linearly allocated <coughs> values. That was the talk about box root yesterday. In this talk, I'll do the contrary, which is to show how to borrow efficiently um, linearly allocated values inside GC allocated values. Uh, it came from a work uh, with uh, Guillaume Combet about a categorical, categorical semantics of destructors. You know the destructors of C++ and Rust that have some explanation in terms of categorical semantics. And uh, one insight of that work is that um, in a, say, functional setting, I mean with algebraic data types, borrowing um, has an imputation with uh, convenient isomorphisms. So uh, I want uh, a language that reflects those isomorphisms. I want to understand what this means. And um, so this means that if you borrow an owned pair, uh, this type will behave uh, isomorphically as um, as a pair of borrows. Okay, it's a bit like sharing from functional programming. You know that the the layout is the same, so you can treat your 
uh, own value as if it was uh, allocated on the GC, even if it wasn't. Um, so this gave rise to a proposal to extend OCaml with resources and, um, and linear allocation. Uh, where well, one interpretation of that was uh, that we can mix uh, memory allocation modes. Um, in fact, there was already an instance of that in OCaml with the out of heap allocation that you could see with the ancient library or with the OCaml net. Uh, this use required a page table. Um, a page table is a data structure that classifies uh, whether, uh, say, a pointer belongs to the major heap or not. You can say where a pointer comes from. And uh, because there was this page table, people started storing pointers outside of the OCaml heap inside values. Uh, with OCaml 4.02, uh, because the page table was expensive, uh, the, I guess the Gen Suite people added the non-naked pointers mode to get some performance boost because they don't need that, uh, that check. Later, uh, naked pointers are deprecated because uh, it is in preparation of multi-core camera where it was believed that uh, multi-core could not have an efficient page table. And then with OCaml 5, the programs containing naked pointers will start to crush or do worse things. Um, another context is that with OCaml 4.14, uh, there was a patch to speed up the GC with prefetching. So it was a nice uh, lesson about computers and all that by uh, Stephen Dolan, is here. Um, so this raised doubts that efficient marking was at all compatible with the notion of page table. So for me, the question was, does the uh, memory management method that I was proposing uh, fundamentally involved a performance trade-off? So to me, the question went beyond the camera. It's, uh, is it uh, possible at all? So here, what you would observe if you run benchmarks. Um, the three on the left is the total time. The three on the right is the marking time. Uh, you see a small performance boost first by enabling the non-naked pointers mode that av avoids the pointer, the page table check during marking. And uh, in the, uh, the third one is with prefetching. So you've got huge boosts thanks to Steven's patch. Um, okay, so uh, I proposed a way to implement an efficient page table that was before the prefetching patch. I did uh, the experiment, so it was a bit more challenging not that there was prefetching. I had to show that uh, it was really, really efficient. The goal here is to fill, uh, obviously, um, an apparent gap in knowledge about the cost of, uh, of the feature. So this is old work. Uh, it's based on OCaml 4.12, because this is what was available at the time with the prefetching patches applied. And so the implementation is uh, implementing a page table with a one level uh, big bag of pages, which is essentially you take your pointer, you look at the uh, most significant bits, and you look uh, directly in a table what, he, what is the value in that. And uh, if you want to do that on a 64-bit address space or 48-bit address space, you need n sufficiently large. So you need a large page allocator. So you need to reserve um, your memory in contiguous chunks of um, of large uh, large blocks, like say 64 megabytes or 256 meg megabytes of reserved address space, uh, not committed. Uh, so that's a simple implementation of that. Uh, for portability, you can look at what the go runtime does. <coughs> Uh, which is uh, an elegant source code to look at. Uh, and I also use that to implement support for huge pages uh, using Linux uh, transparent huge pages. Then I have to deal with the multi-core uh, multi uh, implementation 
I have to show that it scales to multi-core. For that, I use a monotonicity constraint that makes a synchronization trivial. And it's sufficient for interesting uses of the page table. There are two strategies. Either I take a slow path when there is an entry that is unknown, and then I do a CIS. Uh, that happens almost never, so it's a very well predicted branch. Or I use dependency on the ordering or on the arm. And so I, these are the results in uh, here. The measure is the pace, is the number of nanoseconds it takes to decide that uh, one word needs to be uh, or needs to remain live in the OCaml heap during marking. On the right, you've got the pace without prefetching. On the left, uh, the one uh, with prefetching, but with the old page table, which is very inefficient. And in the middle, uh, let me zoom a bit. On the right, you have the cost, uh, simulated cost, if everything took one more cycle per word. So really, there is no wiggle room uh, for paying anything. Essentially, the page table has to be free. And uh, so the second on the right is uh, with <coughs> restoring the uh, forward optimization uh, that was removed with the prefetching patch. Uh, we observed that uh, it cost nothing compared to the to the first one, which is um, which is the prefetching branch with uh, no naked pointers. In the middle, uh, you can see it's uh, a tiny bit faster. It's with the page table that I have implemented. So I want to explain this uh, this result. First, I want to be sure that it's not a fluke. So I do the same experiment. Um, I try two different compilers for uh, with uh, two different compiler options. It's uh, it's very hard to control for code layout effects, fluctuations, and all that. So it's a bit of a proxy for seeing whether uh, the results are significant or not. And uh, we can see that on all um, compiler uh, on all configurations, the page table is. Uh, is slow, uh, is faster. So the pace uh, means that lower is better. Um, so to explain that, uh, I run some synthetic benchmarks. Uh, I introduce variables such as the randomness of the heap, randomness of the value yield layout. Uh, one uh, is to uh, check whether there is uh, the stalls affect the performance. Uh, whether the uh, branch mix prediction affect the performance, whether the immediates or the static data affect the performance. Uh, I, there was a tedious phase for controlling, controlling for layout effects. Uh, I had to instrument the runtime, like to measure the pace of the marking loop, uh, the, then measure the amount of imme immediates and static data in real world programs. To, to have some uh, significant uh, figures, and then other things you have to uh, pay attention to. It is very, very tedious to run that kind of benchmarks and have anything uh, meaningful at all. Um, so here, what looks like the, uh, the inner loop of marking, you encounter a block, you see if it has to be uh, visited by the GC, you try to unqueue it, if it's the case, and before unqueuing it, you prefetch it. Uh, and later on, you can, when you dequeue the value, it uh, hopefully it has been uh, prefetched. So let me do two modifications. I do not introduce the page table yet. The first modification in the first condition is to separate the two uh, the two tests. The, the first one was a kind of optimization, which I found was a premature optimization. And this one goes faster uh, in practice because the first test is very uh, unpredictable uh, in uh, real programs. Uh, so it's important to be able to uh, get out of a branch misprediction fast. 
So if we do it fast with the simplest test possible, we gain two cycles at each uh, branch misprediction. Uh, the second modification is the addition of um, that's the addition of uh, remembering which pointer, uh, what was the source pointer, which is useful for implementing the the forward uh, optimization. And so this version, we do not observe any difference uh, with um, with the original uh, version. I know when I add a page table. So I, I replace the test to know whether it is not in heap by the test whether it is in heap and not an naked pointer. Uh, this goes faster. So there are uh, several explanations for that. I mean, several factors that uh, conditions that need to be met for that. Um, so one is that the page table is a very cache local structure. Uh, it remains in cache. There is a lot of uh, spare L1 cache in the processor during the marking loop. Uh, so having storing the page table in the L1 cache uh, does not uh, put pressure on the rest of the of the computation, and you you're not uh, competing with memory accesses. Um, so the other uh, reason is that as I discovered. Static data, which can now be, um, they can be skipped during marking. Uh, they are encountered fairly enough uh, in real-world programs. So between uh, three and uh, eight percent uh, in OCaml and Coq workloads, and that's why. Uh, so a page table can speed up marking. Uh, the whole uh, development. So we have two simple data structures, uh, Bebop and uh, uh, and two skip lists to implement a best fit allocator. Uh, so it's simpler and less risky than implementing the naked pointers, removing the page table, adding a naked pointer checker, and so on. Uh, the second data structure, uh, the large page allocator, can have other uses, uh, supporting huge pages. Uh, platforms uh, that have uh, a limited uh, memory allocation interface. Um, then uh, we can imagine other things like uh, currently there is a restriction on the memory layout of uh, minor heaps in OCaml 5. They have to be contiguous, so we can relax that to uh, investigate optimizations to uh, minor heap allocations. Uh, and uh, that's it. In, in the future, uh, with the talk from yesterday and the work from today, uh, the next step would be to try to reproduce the nice and interesting results from uh, Perseus, the work on uh, functional but in place, using a tracing GC. And that's it. Thank you.